we knew from the all of the work at the authority that South Cove was to be a unique place within all of the authority, unique because it was associated with the residential area of Battery Park City, as opposed to other places that I would say more commercial, had more civic programs. And of course it had this mandate to bring together a multidisciplinary team, including artists, to conceive and design the park. We knew was rare. I would describe the design as being motivated by a number of specific site conditions that we knew were unique to this artificial constructed landform that was called South Cove. It was to engage people with the water. It was to be a more intimate place for families and people living in the area to go to. And so the design incorporates qualities of a natural cove from its topography and its dune landforms, the way vegetation is highly limited along the exposed shore and then gets richer as you move away from the water. It was really just a very exciting design process. Mary was very strong about that the park emphasized experience, that it was above all to be a great experience for people. And she thought that the primary way to do that would be through connecting people to closer to the level of the water. And we agreed with that. We also talked about how we wanted to dissolve and break down that arbitrary constructed edge of South Cove. And the scheme does that through its topography, through its use of rock and stone, the lower walk and the piers, the articulation of the edge, reaching out into the water, all begin to break down what was just a very harsh cutout along the river. Plant materials or the plants that were used, and I always, you know, cherish this about Susan Child because she had a great knowledge of plants, but she also uh, had this way of using only three or four plants in the most powerful of ways and having them do so much work and create so much character to a place through really a limited palette. And I think that was true at South Cove as well. 